What's up, Cal gang? All right, we got some uh, fundamental theorem of line integrals question here. So it gives us a uh, force field saying that you know, it's equal to sine and y to see the x, x cosine y. And it gives us a line that it's following to get there. So, but what the fundamental theorem of line integrals tells us is that if f is conservative, um, then the line integral is actually just equal to the function at our endpoint minus the function at our starting point. So what do we do to find out if it's conservative or not? Well, to find out if it's conservative, you gotta do something. So we're gonna say that this is Q, right? And that this is P. So this is just the X, you know, X corresponding and this is the uh, Y corresponding. So if the derivative of Q with respect to X is equal to the derivative of P with respect to Y, then our field is conservative and we can enforce this rule. So let's see if it works out. So let's see, derivative of Q with respect to X is equal to uh, cosine of y, and the derivative of p with respect to y is equal to cosine of y, and then that goes away. So perfect. This is showing us that our field is conservative. So now how do we get this? So we need to find a function, basically. And also when we know that our field is conservative, it tells us that our function f is equal to the gradient of our function, right? So now, so we can say that our gradient of the function is equal to, you know, sine of y plus e to the x, x cosine of y, just taken from up there because it says that this is true. So what do we need to do? We need to get rid of the gradient, basically. We need to take the integral and figure out what just f is instead of the gradient of f. So to do this, we're going to start it with, I'm just going to go ahead and take the integral of this x part with respect to x. So it's going to be, so df dx, this is just saying the, uh, the derivative of f with respect to x, which is this part here, and then dx. So what's it going to give us? So it's going to be x sine of y plus e to the x plus some constant, which I'm going to call g of y. It's a function of y instead. All right, so now we have our function of f, but this is, this is equal to f, right? f of x, y is equal to this. But we also have this g of y, and we need to figure out what this g of y is going to be so we can actually get our function, because it could be a number, it could be anything, really. So how do we do this? Well, let's, let's uh, take the derivative of this but with respect to y now. So if you take the derivative of f with respect to y, it's going to be x cosine of y plus, this is going to disappear, and it's going to be g prime of y, right? All right, so also, so we have the, the derivative of f with respect to y is equal to this. But what else do we have? Well, isn't this part also the derivative of f with respect to y? It is, right? This is the same thing. So we have this is equal to del f del y, but it's also equal to x cosine of y. And what you'll notice is that this is going to cancel out, and it's just going to have g prime of y is equal to zero, which is going to tell us that g of y, therefore g of y, is equal to zero. So then we can go ahead, and this is our function. We can get rid of this because it's equal to zero. And this is what we have right here. This is, uh, not this. <laughs> All right, so x sine of y plus e to the x. That's what f is, so let's figure that out. x sine of y plus e to the x. Uh, so f x y is equal to x, wait, what is it? Hold on, I already forgot. Uh, x sine of y plus e to the x, oh, it's the... And there's also a plus c, but it's gonna get canceled out, so you can actually kind of just ignore the plus c, because it's gonna be plus and then minus. So, so let's use our fundamental theorem of line integrals, which is this right here. So this is, so actually, we need to know our starting and end points, which, good thing, it kind of gives it to us, so we see it starts at zero and then it ends at three of t, and it gives us x and y in terms of t. So let's say, uh, so x of zero is gonna be equal to zero, y of zero, when you just plug it in t is equal to zero, you're gonna get equal to zero times whatever, zero. So then y of three, or never mind, x of three, is gonna be equal to three, obviously. And then y of three is gonna be equal to, so it's gonna be three minus three, so it's gonna be zero times three again, it's gonna be zero. So this is our starting, or this is our end point, and this is our starting point. So we can go ahead and say that f of our end starting point, which is three, zero, minus f of zero, zero, and this is equal to the line integral. It just, the fundamental theorem of calculus, or not calculus, line integral. So let's do it. So three, zero, uh, it's gonna be zero, plus e to the three. So it's gonna be e to the three. And then this is gonna be zero again, but then plus, minus, because it's gonna be minus, e to the zero, which is just one. There you go, that's how you solve this line integral problem using the fundamental theorem of line integrals. 
So also on this question, it tells us to recalibrate uh, basically our uh, integral and solve it in a normal way, but by doing a different line instead of this line. So what the fundamental theorem of line integrals tells us is that, say we have point A here and we have point B and this is our vector field, whatever, any way you take from A to B, it could be this, it could be this, it could be all around like this, you're going to get the exact same value. It doesn't matter how you go from A to B. That's what conservative tells us. I kind of drew a Mickey Mouse. Ooh, I'm out of breath. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, we have a starting point and an end point, and we have our line integral and everything, so we can just rewrite this basically in a way easier way. So our line goes from 0, 0 to 3, 0. So we can say that our function, like r of t, which is our, our path that we're taking, is just equal to 3t, 0, because the y never moves. On 0 is less than t is less than 1. So then r prime of t is just going to be equal to 3, 0. And now we can set up a line integral the normal way we do it. So the integral from 0 to 1. And you have this. But you have to remember that you have to plug in what your x and y is. So it's going to be sine of zero, so it's gonna be zero, plus e to the x, so e to the x, but x is 3t. And then y is gonna be x cosine y, which is gonna be, uh, let's see, it's gonna be cosine y, so it's gonna be 3t, right? And then you're gonna dot this with our derivative vector, so it's gonna be three, zero. So then, uh, dt. So we can solve this now. So it's going to be 0 to 1, so the 3, e to the 3t, um, and then this is going to become 0, so dt. So integrating this, it gives us, the t is going to come down and upside down, so on the bottom, so it's going to be just e to the 3t from 0 to 1. And of course, this is going to be e to the 3 minus 1. Same thing, we got another answer, and this is how you prove that it doesn't matter what path you take. We took a totally different path in the line that it gave us. If we took this path, it'd actually be really difficult to solve because you'd have this inside of your sine function. But we figured it out a way easier way using this line instead. So yeah, that's everything about the fundamental theorem of line integrals. I uh, hope you learned a little bit. Uh, subscribe if you want to learn some more. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching.